I don't know you. I don't know your name, or where you live, or what you look like. Yet once we meet, we'll feel like we've met before. This is all conjecture, of course. It presupposes that we even will meet, but we will know immediately that we are soulmates. I won't be shy in my approach, as I have been with other women. You won't be as mysterious and guarded as you have been with other men. When we first lay eyes on each other, we will know that we belong together. Baby, it was a wonderful night. Yes, it was. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to leave you just sitting there. Would you like some coffee? No, no, I don't need coffee. I'll turn on the radio then. Why don't you just stay here and talk to me? You can write another time, can't you? Yeah, true enough. I'm not being a very good host, am I? Oh, no, that's okay. It's not easy to entertain me. I've been told that with my energy I make a boyfriend feel less like a boyfriend and more like a babysitter. Yeah, not that bad. The problem lies with me. I can be boring. No, no, you're just... You're just not used to being with someone as high voltage as I am. I mean it. If you hadn't come over last night and this morning, I would have done little more than sleep, drink coffee, and write this notebook. You're really serious about writing, aren't you? Are you trying to get something published? I'm always trying to get something published. I've spent the last decade of my life trying to get something published. What is it? A novel? I don't know how you would classify it. I guess that's why I can't get it published. Publishers don't want to print something they can't classify. But I guess you could call it a romantic manifesto. That sounds really interesting. I don't believe I've ever heard of anything like that before. Neither is anybody else on the planet except me, it seems. Which is why there's no identifiable market for it. Which is why no publisher can get it sold. It's nice to know I'm dating a guy who's so romantic he's writing a book about it. <laughs> Thanks. Can I read some of it? Actually, it's not ready for public consumption yet. Some of the things I'm writing are pretty personal, and I have to do a lot more work on the book before I'm comfortable revealing it. But I'm not exactly people. I mean, we've been seeing each other for two weeks. We've slept together. We have long conversations on and off the phone every night. I mean, just because you haven't officially made me your girlfriend yet doesn't mean we haven't shared intimacy. I've shared a lot with you. I've been very open with you, considering we haven't been dating for very long. I know how it seems, but I really need to keep some of this material under wraps. Do you trust me? I... I do. You, you stuttered when you said that, which means you're lying. I'll ask you again. Do you trust me? We've only been dating two weeks. We're just not ready to open up completely yet. Have I given you reason for suspicion? No. It's just... baggage. <laughs> I need to start dating guys my own age again. The older ones always have fucking baggage. I can't help it, Violet. I'm a decade older than you, and I've had a lot of bad luck in my love life. We're all the sum of our past, and I've got a lot more past than a guy your age. You know, I have a feeling that you're so determined to keep what you're writing in that book a secret from me because you're writing stuff about me in that book that's not exactly flattering. That's not true. You know, I read an ex-boyfriend's blog once, and he wrote all this stuff about how I have an okay body, but a sort of ugly face, and kinds of shit like that. Anyway, I know sometimes a guy has an overwhelming need to get that sort of shit off his chest. You read his blog? Yep. Those are his private thoughts. Not on the internet, they weren't. Well, anyway, I'm not writing anything unflattering about you. I think you're extraordinary. Well, that's a nice blanket statement. A blanket statement? Yes, it's... Something sweet sounding that you say to appease someone in a general way, so as to avoid having to praise them in detail. Because, deep down, you can identify very little about them that you deem to be truly praiseworthy. We've only been seeing each other for two weeks, so you can't have fallen in love with me by now. So you haven't arrived at that stage where you love everything about me. Everything from my starry-eyed, reciprocal, loving looks to the way I brush my teeth. 
you don't go into those specifics because you don't feel strongly enough about me to do so just yet. So you make a blanket statement like you're extraordinary and then hopefully I'll be so infatuated with you that one generalizing word like extraordinary will be enough to satisfy me. Well, sadly for you, that's not the case. Our journey has only carried us two weeks, and the road to the aforementioned will be considerably longer, my friend. I know. Glad to know you agree with me. Now, let's see Violet. how you really feel about me. Hmm. International Heart, Letters to a Perfect Woman. Is that the title? Okay. Let's see what this romantic manifesto consists of. Oh. This is interesting. I limp from lover to lover. Your love is my prosthetic and it's the only one that fits. Your absence has been as long as my life, but it feels 10 times as long. Mine is an abandoned soul awaiting our reunion. Aw. Oh, I really like this one. Society doesn't consider you beautiful and it kills me. I haven't seen you in the flesh yet, but you stun me. You seduce and entrance. You inadvertently hypnotize me, and I haven't even met you yet. A lot of people think you're ugly because you have a few extra pounds to carry around, and you're so unique in your style of dress and in the way you apply your makeup. I'm sure your eyes are like none I have ever seen. They will pull me towards you like metal to a magnet. <laughs> certainly have your picture of your soulmate all painted out in great detail, don't you? You see? You're getting upset. I knew some of the material in that book would upset you. I just can't help but wonder why I'm even here. I mean, I don't fit the description of this perfect woman you wrote about. It doesn't matter. I mean, I bear no resemblance to her, so I'm just a substitute, aren't I? You're settling for me until she comes along. Or if you and I did work out, you'd live your entire life feeling unfulfilled because your fantasy woman never pirouetted her way into your life. I'm not interested in being a substitute, Kyle. I want to be number one in my man's life. I want him to dream about me. I want him to want me so bad that he doesn't fill notebooks with fantasies about fictitious women. I deserve far more than that. And I'm going to get it. I won't get it from you, obviously, but I will get it. My chances of getting it are far greater than those of the woman in international heart. I'm not carrying around any extra weight and I don't look unique, whatever that's supposed to mean. I've had experiences in the past where I wasn't good enough and I won't go through it again. I am good enough. And if you aren't capable of realizing that, then we'll part ways right now. So tell me. Would you ever be as happy with me as you would be with the international heart mystery woman? I've known you long enough to know that that passive aggressive gesture is Kyle speak for I don't have the balls to say no to your question so this is my reply. The entire time we've been dating have you been ignoring our incompatibilities because you felt that since you're settling anyway you might as well overlook everything that's wrong with what we have because in your dysfunctional dating career those are occupational hazards you're willing to forgo in order to get sex and affection from pretty girls who try desperately to come first in the race to win your heart even though the international heart mystery woman came first and got the gold. Do you think I would at least have had what it takes to become the silver medalist? You wouldn't even have gotten the bronze. There went one of your substitutes. She was right when she said that you've come in first in the race to win my heart. It's just too bad that until we meet, I'll never win with any woman. Today, as always, I've come in last.